No, he um, he was here. Uh, I think two years before he died, he 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 moved to Belfast to a nursing home. His uh, daughter uh, was a, a taught physics for many years in, in Methodist College in, in Belfast. So he moved to there to be to be near his uh, his daughter, and uh, and died uh, peacefully in uh, in the nursing home. For us here in, in physics, uh, uh, very very personally, uh, uh, someone we would all come to, to know and, and love. Um, I think in the wider community, um, you know, he was not a, a public man in, in, in the way that uh, Nobel Prize winners tend to be now. Uh, it's just, I suppose, of his generation and also his particular character. That was not how he how he operated. But for people who, who cared about uh, about science, and people who would have known him through through his church activities and, and, and other and generally in the college, you know, genuine sense of, of loss. If I had met him, would I know he was someone different? I uh, no, I, d I don't think you would. Uh, you know, you would when if you were introduced to him as here is a Nobel Prize winner. I think then, in, in, inevitably, you, you would you you would come to it with a different mindset. Um, for 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 something like ETS Walton, uh, basically a, a key experiment uh, in a particular time. Uh, I mean, I think if you read uh, Dr. Finch's uh, uh, article about uh, uh, Walton, he he makes the point that if he had come to Trinity as he was asked to do uh, two years before he did come here, he would have missed out on that experiment, and he would have missed out. On the Nobel Prize, so luck has a lot to do with it. But then, as somebody once said, you, you make your own luck. Do you do you feel lucky to have had the office next door to a, a great man of science? <laughs> I do indeed, and I and I feel lucky to to have known him and to have had chatted with him. And uh, yes, yeah, very much so. Hammer and spark. Not the mace proclaiming the glorious news, nor the cartoon mallet of the first atom smashers, nor the claw dismantling the timbers for reuse, nor the gavel expounding the laws of student physics, nor the sledge on plowshares for the global village. Listen. A gentle tapping, the peen of the silversmith, the scintillations that betoken faith.